the Windows 10 operating system has been out for more than a couple years now, I still get questions on how to perform certain tasks and which settings to use within the operating system. Whether you're new to Windows 10, having just upgraded from an older operating system, recently purchased a new computer with Windows 10 pre-installed, or like many others that have become frustrated with the macOS operating system from Apple and have finally made the switch to a Windows computer, in this beginner's guide, I will go over the basic settings and give you a tour of Windows 10 to get you started with using the operating system. Coming up next on Tech Gumbo. If you're familiar with the other tutorials on this channel, I try to present everything in simple terms. This video will follow that same format. I'll go over the basic layout, show you how to perform certain tasks, and later in this video, we'll dig deep into the settings menu for Windows 10. If you're a power user, you may not learn a whole lot here. Since this is a beginner's guide, this video is intended for brand new users to the operating system to learn the absolute basics. Let's dive right in. When you log into Windows 10, you will see your desktop. Your layout may vary slightly from mine. You'll have your main window with a bar covering the bottom of the page. That is where you will find the start menu on the far left, the Cortana bar, task view, the task bar, the status bar, notifications, and arrow peak to the far right. More on those later. Let's first look at the primary window. You'll have your wallpaper in the background. I run a multiple monitor setup, so I typically don't keep shortcuts or anything else on my primary screen. I'll drag some over right now from another monitor. Most software that you install will put a shortcut on your desktop. If you happen to install software that doesn't, I'll now show you a quick way to add a shortcut to your desktop. Let's pretend that the Google Chrome browser did not add a shortcut to your desktop. To add it, go to the Cortana search bar. Here at the bottom, type Google Chrome into the search bar. Do not use the microphone function for this. Right click on Google Chrome and select open file location. Find the icon, right click, hover over send to, then click on desktop create shortcut. Now the shortcut for Chrome is on the desktop. Let's close out this window. You can move the icons wherever you want them. Also in the main window, if you right click, you have several choices. In view, you can change the size of the icons. You can sort them by name, size, item type, date modified. If you select next desktop background, you can change your wallpaper. For new, you have several options, including adding a new folder to your desktop. If you select display settings, here you can make changes to your display. I'll go into more detail on these later on. And if you select personalize, it will open up the personalization options. I'll go into more detail on these later on in the video as well. Now let's take a look at the bottom bar, starting with Cortana, which is similar to Google Assistant and Siri and can also be used to search your computer. You could either click on the microphone, or you could use the word hey, followed by the word Cortana to ask your questions. Here's an example. Hey Cortana, what's the weather in New York City right now? There's a winter storm warning in effect until 1 a.m. tomorrow. Right now, it's cloudy and 27 in New York. Hey Cortana, Tell me a joke. What is the difference between a well-dressed man on a unicycle and a poorly dressed man on a bicycle? A tire. Those are a couple of quick examples on how to use Cortana. I made a couple videos last year on how to use the assistant and another video with questions you can ask Cortana. I'll click into the search bar. Along the left side, if you go down to the settings icon to be able to use your microphone to get the assistant to respond to the key words, you'll want to turn this on. To the right of Cortana is Task View, where you can add virtual desktop layouts. So for example, if you work from home, you could have Desktop 1 be your personal workspace, and Desktop 2, everything associated with your work. And you can add new desktops by selecting the plus sign. Let's go back to Desktop 1. To the right of Task View is the Task Bar, where you can pin some of your favorite programs. Pinning from your desktop is easy. I'll go up here and grab Opera Neon 
and drag it down here to the taskbar. And that will pin it to the taskbar. To remove programs, just right click on the icon and select unpin from taskbar. And you can move these icons around if you want to. So I'll drag Vivaldi here to the right and Adobe Creative Cloud to the left. To the far right is the status bar. You can choose what is visible and what is not. If you select the up arrow, it will show you those programs that are not visible here in the status bar. To move one of those items to the status bar, you can click and drag it down. And to remove an item from the status bar, you can just click and drag it up. Here is where you'll find your notifications. So if you click on notifications, they'll show up right here if you have any. And you'll have a quick access menu to your network, all settings, Bluetooth, VPN, and others. And to the far right, you can barely see it, it's just a sliver, is Arrow Peak, just to the right of notifications. I'll open up a program to show you what it does. When I select Arrow Peak, it'll show the desktop, and selecting it again will show open Windows. One of the most controversial aspects of Windows 10 is the Start Menu. If you left click, you get the new Start Menu. If you right click, you get a menu that looks like the classic Start Menu found on Windows 7 or older. Here you can quickly access many features and settings. For the purposes of this video, we'll focus on the primary Start Menu by left clicking on the Windows icon. Along the left, you'll see programs listed in alphabetical order. If you select any of the letters, I'll select A. You can quickly jump around the list. I'll select S. I'll hover my mouse over a program. Right clicking, you have the option to pin to the start menu, which will make the program appear to the right. Where it says more, you have the option to pin to your taskbar, rate and review and share. And you can also uninstall the program from here. To the right are tiles of your applications. I'll admit that I still don't like and have not used this feature much since it was introduced in Windows 8. I just showed you how to pin tiles to your start menu. If you right click a tile, you have several options, most notably being able to resize the tiles. Currently I have Netflix set on medium and I'll make this wider. You can even move the tiles around if you want to. Along the far left of the Start menu is where you'll find File Explorer, which is where you can access files and folders on your computer, Settings, and below that is Power, where you can restart, shut down, or put your computer to sleep. More on Settings later. Just like iOS and Android, Microsoft has its own App Store for Windows. You can find it in the list by selecting a letter, jump to M, and finding Microsoft Store in the list. If you plan to go here often, I'd recommend pinning it to your taskbar. Currently, it's in my taskbar, just to the right of File Explorer. So I'll open it up. On their homepage, you'll find Featured Items. Along the top, you can select categories that include apps, games, movies and TV, and books. If you know what you're looking for, you can do a search. I'll do a search for Kodi, and there it is. To install any app, select Get. To the far right, if you select the menu icon, you have the options to view downloads and updates, store settings, your library, along with other account information. Now let's go take a look at the various settings for Windows 10. If you've used older versions of Windows, you should be familiar with the control panel which you can still access by typing control panel into the search bar. Or you could say, hey Cortana, control panel. All right, which control panel do you want to open? Control panel or settings? Control panel. All right, starting control panel. Here you can still access many of the settings for your computer. Since Microsoft is slowly phasing out the control panel, we'll focus on the primary settings app for Windows 10. You could ask Cortana to open settings, or you could just go to the start menu and select the settings icon. With settings open, I'll move quickly through each of these categories, highlighting options that might be of interest to you. 
We'll go through these in order, starting with System. Display is where you can rearrange and change settings for your monitors. You can change the order of your displays by selecting the number and dragging it to the left or to the right. A cool feature introduced last year is Nightlight, which can reduce the blue light on your screens at night, which studies claim can make you sleep better. In Notifications and Actions, you can add or remove quick actions, which show up when you select notifications that I showed you earlier. And if you scroll down this page, you can turn on or off which apps are allowed to send you notifications. Power and Sleep is where you can set your power settings. For more options, select Additional Power Settings and select a plan that works best for you. Here you can see your storage. Storage Sense is something that I leave on to automatically free up space. Tablet Mode is useful for those of you that have a Microsoft Surface or similar device that can be used as a tablet. And in multitasking, there is no need to turn any of these off. Now for devices. Most of these are self-explanatory. Uh, Bluetooth and other devices. You can see what's connected to your system or add devices. Printers and scanners will show you what's connected to your system. Here's where you can change your mouse settings. In typing, I would suggest leaving these turned on, especially if you're a horrible speller. And in USB, make sure this one is checked so you can get notified if there are any issues connecting to USB devices. If you select phone, you can link an Android or iPhone to be able to work continuously between your PC and phone with compatible apps. For some of you, this is a feature that might be useful. In network and internet, you can see your network status, set up Wi-Fi, and other options. For those of you that thought dial-up was dead, it's not. There are still many areas in the United States and around the world that don't have broadband service yet. Personalization is where you can make changes to the overall look of Windows 10. I'll spend a little bit more time in this category. You can set the background to be a slideshow, just a single picture, or a solid color. You can browse your computer for other pictures that you would prefer to have as your background. You can set how often the picture gets changed, anywhere from one minute to one day. If you put a check mark here, you can automatically have the system pick an accent color based on your background. Currently, the accent color on my system is blue, but you can change it to any of the colors listed. And if you scroll down this page, in previous videos, many have asked how I got this dark background for the settings menu. When you first launch Windows 10, light is the default. For me, it's a little too bright, so I prefer the dark. When you're on your lock screen, the default pictures are going to be from Microsoft. If you want to change that, you can choose your own picture or use your slideshow. I'll just stick with the Windows Spotlight here. Themes is a great place to personalize Windows 10. I currently have several themes. You can get additional themes in the Windows Store, and there are a lot to choose from. If you need more screen space and you want to get rid of the taskbar, one I use often is automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode. When you head into the apps category, you will see a listing of all the software and apps on your system. This is a good place to uninstall software that you no longer need. So just find a program that you want to get rid of, and then select uninstall. Default apps, as the name implies, is a good place to set defaults for email, maps, music player, and so on and so forth. When you first install Windows 10, Microsoft Edge will be your default web browser on your system. This is a shocker. It even says here it's recommended for Windows 10. To change any of the defaults, just choose another app that's listed. We'll skip over accounts, which is where you can add accounts to your system. Time and language is an area where you shouldn't have to mess with the settings too much. For some of you, the text-to-speech settings may be useful to change the voice to one of the three listed and to change the speed. Some YouTubers use text-to-speech to narrate their videos. In gaming, if you don't plan to record or broadcast your gameplay, you may want to consider turning the game bar off. Many players that have installed games from the Microsoft Store have experienced a multitude of game crashes on low and high powered systems. Many have noticed by turning the game bar off that crashes to their desktop have reduced substantially. 
The ease of access settings is where you want to go if you have difficulty hearing, seeing, or working with your keyboard or mouse. Just select one of the categories on the left that you think will help you out and adjust the settings. We already discussed Cortana earlier, so let's go into the privacy settings. In a recent video, I discussed a couple settings that might be useful for you to increase your privacy. First, in general, you can turn off advertising ID, then go down the left pane to speech, inking, and typing, and you can turn off speech services and typing suggestions. If you turn the second one off, you won't be able to speak to Cortana. The last settings category is update and security. The only settings in this category that have had to change are in Windows Update. It says I have an update that's available. The status is awaiting restart, which will happen outside of active hours. You don't want your system to restart if you're actively using your computer. So select change active hours and select the hours you do not want Windows to automatically restart your computer. If you want to specify a time for Windows to restart to finish installing updates, go to Restart Options, make sure this is toggled on, and select a time and day. Below that, you'll see Show More Notifications. It's typically a good idea to leave this turned on, just in case you forgot that you had scheduled a time to restart your computer. The notification will allow you to delay the restart if needed. And with that, this closes out the Windows settings portion of this video. If you need further assistance with using Windows 10, I've created a playlist that I will link to in the description with 17 other videos, including useful keyboard shortcuts, tips to speed up performance, along with others that hopefully will help you out. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if it was useful for you. It's difficult to cover everything in this type of video, so let me know in the comments if you have any other tips that you think might be beneficial for others to know. And if you haven't done so already, click on the subscribe button and bell notification icon for more Windows 10 tips and other tech-related stuff from Tech Gumbo.